Welcome to episode 9 of Build the Hermani. So this week we're going to continue with the cannons. Um, hopefully by the end of this stage we'll, we'll have uh, painted all of this section red. And then what we will do is we will introduce the cannons. Um, and we will need to clean these up. Um, let me try and find one. That, right. This one has been cleaned up. As you can see, there's some scrape marks on it. That's just where I, I cleaned it up. Um, I had a quick look at these, and some of them I found quite poor. I'll be honest with you there. Um, nothing, there we go. Look, that one's quite, you can see the seam lines on there. So if we paint those without taking those down first, that is going to show up as really ugly. So we will need to deal with those. So first of all, I'm going to deal with the cannons. And these are all the parts that we need to paint red. Um, now, when I did the second hull, uh, sorry, the second deck, I actually made a mistake, which someone very kindly pointed out to me. Um, when obviously I did a, I did varnish. Um, I need some kind of undercoat on this. Um, I could use primer, um, but this is made of wood and it will will soak things. So what we're going to do is. We're going to use PVA craft glue. Now this particular one, as I will hopefully demonstrate, is very, very thick. Um, the only way I can describe this is um, not in a great way, to be honest with you. Um, I can, all I can think of is, um, is, is mucus that comes out of your nose. That's probably the uh, best way to describe it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to thin that with water. Um, so bear with me one sec while I go and get some. Right, so normally I have water ready, but for some reason today I don't. Now as you can see, this is, I don't know if you can see this, this is far too thick to use. So we're going to thin this down. Now obviously if you buy um, a less expensive brand, then um, you, it's going to be a lot thinner. So we're just going to make it sort of a watery light consistency. So there we go. That's thinning. That's still too thick in my opinion. So we'll add a bit more. I think with this particular brand of PVA, I'm probably looking at about um, one to two parts water to one part PVA glue. So you don't need a lot of glue to start with. And what this is going to end up doing is giving us a very, very thin layer of PVA. I'm just going to just a little bit more. Um, obviously you won't get this any thinner than a water consistency. But I'm just seeing how it clings to the side. And it's, it's running down. So this is... Um, for the people who airbrush and paint models, this is probably about airbrush consistency. So I could probably run, I wouldn't run this through an airbrush, but I could, it's, um, if your paint was this thin, you could run it through the airbrush. So, what I'm going to do, now I'm not going to be able to do all of this, um, because obviously I need to make contact, oops, I suppose that's one way of doing it, isn't it? Okay, so that's a mistake. So we have inadvertently coated. I mean, we'll eventually we're going to end, we're going to coat this with PVA anyway. Um, but that's not how I want to do it. So what I'll do. So yeah, basically what we're going to do is we're just going to paint the whole lot with a PVA, and then we'll leave that for as long as it takes. I actually don't know how long it's going to take. Now I've not painted the very ends of the metal nor the underneath that's just to give me somewhere to hold and what I'll do is I'll try and suck this PVA up so we'll uh, try and paint another one here and then we'll suck some up with this so yeah that was a uh, not intentional um, but I think that'll work so what this will do is it will seal the uh, cannon seal the wood and um, it will give a very very thin layer of well it's pretty much like plastic um, so that when we apply the paint 
the paint will stick on top of the PVA and it won't soak into the wood. So I'm going to speed the rest of this up and then I'll I'll uh, I'll do a whoosh on the screen and I'll see you when it's all finished. Okay, so the next stage we're going to do, and we'll do all of this while the cannons are drying. Um, you don't need to wait too long for the uh, for the PVA before you can start working with it, um, but you do obviously need it to fully dry um, until you um, start painting on it. So as you can see, I've I've done the top, and then um, I let, I did all of them, and then I went back to the first one. I just finished the bottom off. So that's actually workable now, but I wouldn't start painting on that for probably until tomorrow, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but obviously it depends how hot and humid it is in, in your house. So this is the cannon that I've done before. Um, let me just wait for the focus to come in. So you can see there that I've given it a, a little quick file over. Um, so basically mainly down one line and then the little edges there and then just a little light file on the other side. That's all it's really taken. So we'll look at this one. So you see there it's got quite a nasty seam line on it and that's gonna need some work. And that one's got a bit of a seam line. And all we're gonna do is, we wanna just keep an eye on this little ridge there because there's some nice detail there. So we will, we can be quite vigorous in the middle but then as we come up to the end, we try to slow down a bit. And there we go. And that's all we need to do. It's really not a lot of effort. And my camera seems jumpy then. So just trying to get a good focus in there. So there you can see where the seam lines are. Now for smaller areas like this one, um, you've got two choices. You can get a smaller file, one with a bit of a smaller tip, and you'll have to go quite slow in there. Or you could just try and get the side of the file in, like I've done there. Just be careful not to remove that detail. I'll probably end up saying that a few times, um, but obviously it's a point that's probably worth making. Now if some of these are quite large, what you can do is you can get a seam line remover, but this isn't really designed for metal. Um, no, I think that's too harsh for metal, actually. Yeah. Um, but they do do, th you know, equipment for that. Perhaps scrape it with a knife, but I'm quite liking gently going over with a file. So I won't do all of these on camera because I bet it's quite boring watching the same thing over and over. Um, but... I just want to emphasize that you do you will need to do some work on this now there's there's two two trains of thought on this um, obviously this isn't this isn't acceptable straight out of the box now a lot of people and, and I to a point myself will say well that's what it is you've got to do that um, Others will say, oh, well, I spend a lot of money on that. You'd expect them to be better quality. I don't know. I'd like to know your thoughts on it. Do you feel that it's just part of the hobby? I think that's going to need a bit more. Or do you think this should all be done for you? You think the quality should be better? So there we go. So that's number two done. So what I'll do is I will finish it there. And then I'll do the rest off camera because all ten, well, all remaining eight are going to be exactly the same. Um, so we'll come back. Well, let me just check these as well. These bits they might need a bit taken down as well. As you see, there's quite a lot that doesn't need any taken down, so I don't really bother. Where it's dull, which is where I've left it, it doesn't need it. But the shiny bits is where I've taken it down. Okay, guys, so I'll get on with the rest of them and I'll see you in a moment. 
So uh, the next stage is um, these need to be primed. By when we say prime, we need to add a primer. You see, I've not done a fantastic job, but that's fine. These are made of metal. Now, I do apologise. I've actually done these off camera, and I'll explain why in a moment. Um, now, these being metal will probably need a different primer from these. These actually don't really need a primer, um, but um, be A, because we're going to be priming these, and B, a black undercoat will give... Um, I mean, I can make another video on um, different colour undercoats and how they affect the top coat. Um, at this particular point, it's not relevant, but um, basically by adding a, a dark undercoat, it's going to give it that older look. Now, because I had to prime these, I thought I'll prime those anyway. And the primer I used, used this time was a Chaos Black by Citadel. Um, I've got to be honest with you, I bought it, I didn't think it was economical, and I've been using it for various projects because it's been there and I might as well use it up. And the more I've used it, the more I've actually enjoyed using it. Um, but it does, as you can see, make an absolute mess. Um, I did actually, as you can probably tell, I did use a rubber glove. Possibly should have used two. Um, but that's not a problem. Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to deal, although these two are different, we're going to deal with them all in one go. Um, there is a good painter out there called Next Level Painting, and he goes on about keeping yourself busy in the beats level, something like that. Keep yourself busy. And what that means is that if we paint this, we're probably going to have to give it two or three coats. Now, some people might paint a coat, wait for it to dry, paint another coat, wait for it to dry, etc, etc, etc. And the whole project's going to take you years. Um, but what, we're at, what he means is by keeping yourself busy, while you're waiting for the paint to dry on that one, work on this one. So, the first colour I'm going to use is, now it does say in the instruction manual red. So I've gone for flat red. Um, I was tossing up between whoops, flat red by Vallejo model colour and red. And I had a look at the two colours and I, what I actually did was I blew the instructions up quite big on the, on the uh, screen. And I think actually the brighter red is going to be better. However, the black undercoat will just bring that down just a little bit. Um, I don't really want a big bright in your face red. Now, this is the equivalent to a layer paint, and by layer paint it means it's not, the pigment isn't solidly thick. We will need to thin it down, but not as much as, say, for example, a Citadel base paint. Um, and just use whatever thinning medium you want. And I'm thinning this roughly 50-50, we'll, but we'll see how it goes. And I think I'm not going to have enough paint in there to do the whole project, so I will just have to top it up, but that's fine. Now, I don't know if you noticed how much I put in. I literally put in two blobs. And what we're going to do, as this is the first time I've done this on this project, I'm going to explain how to paint. When you mix up paint, uh, you shouldn't really use your brush, um, but when if you do use your brush to mix it, just wipe that off. Don't wipe it really, really tight, but just get the excess off. And what we're going to do, we've got our thin paint, and we're going to run it through the palette, and then we're going to twist our bristles. Um, in fact, I'll tell you what, let's give you a full caboodle paint lesson. Right, so here we have a piece of paper, which is going to serve our demonstration purposes very, very well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my brush in the, in the paint, as you can see, um, I deliberately not use a great, great brush. What we're going to do is we're going to try and draw some thin lines. And you see how they're a little bit out of control. This, this isn't going to be a lot better, but... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just twist my brush at the end. And you can see I can just get a little bit more control on that. So although this is quite a thick brush... I can still maintain some quite thin lines. Um, the quality of the paint, how thin it is, um, you know, they all make a difference. Let me show you the difference between thin down paint and paint that hasn't been thinned. 
so here we have some paint and you can see it's thick because it actually stands up on its own and even though I'm going to just twist this you can see it's it's quite hard to control and only, we only get a few brush strokes I know this is paper and paper is quite absorbent but can you see how it doesn't take an awful long time before we uh, run out of paint it just dries so I'm going to pop I'm actually deliberately over thinning this because over thinning, thinning it will emphasize the point uh, the other thing I cannot demonstrate on the paper is uh, how it actually dries if you, um, you you put your paint straight on you tend to get brush marks and that's quite awkward so with my thin paint and again I've twisted my brush just like I did on this one let's see if we can match the number of lines two three four five six seven eight nine can you see how that paint is going on practically forever it is thinner the coverage isn't going to be so good but you can see how by twisting my brush and thinning the paint there's a lot more control I can do a lot more with it look see this one brush full is just going on forever and ever and ever and ever just to show it's not a trick let's go back to the thick paint can you see how it's just it doesn't work with us it's working against us thin paint it's so much more on our side when we twist the brush and that's a size 3 brush this is how thick I can go so you can see we've just got that much more control it just goes on forever and ever and ever so right with that in mind we're going to paint these now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thick paint that we've got and I'm going to put it back into this this one here um, this was this is slightly over thin by having it too thin um, basically what's going to happen is that there'll just be hardly any coverage at all and uh, ideally what I'm looking at is um, actually because I've got a little bit of black on my thumbnail well, you'll see a lot of painters will use their thumbnails um, that's probably about right actually so you can see that that is red the little bit of black coming through underneath and that's fine um, but you can see also that every detail on my thumbnail is present and correct and so we're going to be using two coats on this two thin coats if anybody paints miniature models you'll understand the uh, joke with two thin paints and there's a guy called Duncan Rhodes and he always advocates two thin coats so I'm gonna do this one and then what I'll do is the rest I will speed up as I enjoy doing lately and the coverage on this isn't gonna be awesome but you'll see that it's red unfortunately that's just the way it goes with model painting if you want a good finish you gotta put more work into it but what will be handy is that when I come to do the second coat the first cannon will be able to do a direct comparison between the first one that we've put one you know one that we only put one coat on and then that we've put two coats on and what I'll also do is I'll give you a choice of the detail levels that we can take this to um, it's quite exciting some nice basic techniques and even though I won't be seeing it I am going to paint the bottom and I'll tell you what this is a very very cheap brush I just thought I'd give them a try um, if you've never painted before this is probably a perfect brush 
I think they cost something like £1.99 for three brushes, um, which is about, well, the brushes that I buy are considered cheap at about £3 a brush. Right, so you see that's not excellent coverage, but that's what you get with the first coat. So I'm going to continue these off camera, uh, sorry not off camera, I'm going to continue these speeded up and then we'll come back to them, we'll do some work on the cannons and then we'll go back to the second coat on, on these bits. Okay. Okay, so uh, I've done these red ones. I'm going to let them dry. I mean, to be honest with you, you could go straight in and do the next ones. Um, you'll also notice, perhaps, that I popped one down here rather than over there. Um, the reason for that was, um, as I was painting it, the wheel fell off. So I just popped that to one side, and then I just glued the wheel back on. Right, so for the uh, cannons paint I'm choosing to use this time is an Abaddon black by Citadel any plain black will do um, I mean I got this for free in, on the front of a magazine and oh I love that noise I'm not as keen on these because I really don't like paints from a pot so much um, I do like my little dropper bottles um, having said that you know these are a good paint so as we did before, we're going to pop a little bit of paint in the palette. We're going to thin this down to a nice consistency. Um, you'll also notice I changed brushes. This is my uh, what I call base brush. Well, it is called a basing brush. Um, there are different kinds of brushes for different tasks. Um, a base brush tends to be quite, quite hard, but it's a nice brush, a nice flat brush as you can see. And that's good for just applying a base coat all over. Now, Citadel paints, they're quite heavily pigmented. And I don't understand the science behind them, but they also make good primers as well, especially on plastic. Right, so because I need to hold this, I'm going to do this in two stages. And I'm just going to apply a little bit of paint over the top, just halfway up. And I'm choosing the, the wider side then that way when it comes to um, applying the next coat I'll know which side I've done because I know I've done the larger side first and the reason I'm painting because some of you might say oh well the cut the, uh, the won't, won't the chaos black do the job yes but this has a slightly different finish um, so it's uh, if you put an undercoat on and then you just need to touch it up with uh, paint because the finishes are slightly different um, you will see the difference so I'm gonna I think I'm gonna end up speeding this up actually and um, I'm not sure if it will dry in time for me to do the second coat ideally what I want is that this coat is gonna dry on the first one before I finish the tenth one and then I can work straight on to the next one. So I think one coat is going to be enough for this. It looks like it will be. Um, like I say, this is a um, a much heavier pigmented paint. And by pigment, I mean um, you have obviously you have the colour. So if you imagine one molecule of power, one drop of paint has one unit of of color in it and I don't know the actual science um, but let's say it has 10, 10 units of a carrier medium 
you know, some kind of paint medium. Um, so that paint on its own is, is usually a powder. And then you add some kind of medium to that. And it's usually called uh, a medium. Funnily enough, that is what it's called. And that will turn the powder into a paint. So you might have, say, one, one part of paint, 10 parts medium, for example, is a normal paint. And then obviously you're gonna thin that. So you might end up with uh, one part paint, uh, 10 parts medium, and 10 parts water. And you know, I think I can go straight into that. Um, now, with, uh, with these paints being what we call a heavily, more heavily pigmented, there might be, say, twice as much paint. So there may only be five parts medium. So, or put another way, it might be two parts paint, one, uh, ten parts medium. So you, you got twice as much paint in there. Um, the exact proportions, I really don't know. Um, but obviously I'm just making those figures up just to sort of emphasize the point. Um, now, these gun barrels, they're a little bit tricky. Can you see, can you see the silver dot in the middle? That's because these actually have got holes in them. So, um, they're going to be a little bit tricky to do. So, um, these aren't fully dry, but these are dry enough just for me to handle. So, and of course, if you thin your paints as well, something I didn't mention before, they dry quicker. It's a bit like baking a cake, isn't it? If you put, if you cook, say, for example, a pancake um, or a thin pastry cooked in a frying pan, for those of you who don't know what a pancake is, um, it actually cooks fairly quickly. <coughs> but if you pour the entire mix in, takes longer it's the same with toast actually if you you have your bread cut really thin it burns very quickly doesn't it um, whereas if you have a thick piece of bread you'll find that the outside is cooked but the inside has is still soft because the, the toast has not had the opportunity to get inside right so guys these are nearly finished um, so, and I think that that will actually do it. I think that's enough paint on there. Um, the coverage looks very good. Let me just make sure I've not removed that. So let's go back to the first one. And yeah, I'm very happy with that. We've got an all over black. Um, now you could, if you really want to, perhaps put a, um, a, a metallic medium over that. Um, I don't think that's going to be necessary. I'm just going to clean my brush out while I chat to you. Um, but I think that's okay. We're going to be doing a bit of further work to it. Um, the instructions do state um, to give that little dry brush a burnt umber. But it doesn't say to do anything further with the base of the cannons. But we will be taking them both uh, a stage further. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry a little bit. In fact, I'm going to make myself a coffee. Um, because hobby is meant to be for relaxing. In fact, I might even have a beer. Um, and then I will, uh, hopefully you'll join me on the second stage of, of doing those. Okay, so as before, we're going to take our red. We'll pop a little bit into the palette. Probably just, let's pop about two drops, shall we? Um, that last red just about nearly went all the way. Um, and then we'll just give that a nice thin, roughly, um, roughly slightly more than twice, uh, roughly more, of, la, 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 just over what I call one to one, um, one part paint, just over one part thinner. And um, we'll get away with thinner paint on this one because we've already got a base coat. Um, and just sort of judge it on the first one. And you know what I think I think I might just put a pop a bit more paint on that I don't think there's going to be enough to do the whole 
10 um, the 10 cannon so it's just a little bit frustrating when you have to stop halfway through to um, to top your paint up now I've said this before this is where I'm a little bit naughty you shouldn't really mix your paint with with the brush but I do my project so let's uh, apply a second coat in fact actually that is oh no that's okay that's fine so make sure you get all of the bits what well, I've actually done this in the sort of the wrong order it's not really the wrong order but what I found easier is actually start with the bottom so I'll do the bottom and that worked on the last one because if the wheels aren't quite glued on properly this is the point the wheels are going to fall off so do the base do one of the sides and then do the other side this way I am going to get my fingers uh, paint on my fingers but you know that's the way it is the alternative is to paint half of it put that half down wait for it to dry then do the other half right so this is one cannon done and Let's turn the light out so that's one cat that's this cannon with two coats that's uh, one of what I'll call the ordinary cannons and this one it had a little bit extra paint on it so it came out slightly redder um, so let's see if, yeah I'm finding that a little bit tricky to but that's fine so that's one cannon done so what I'll do now is I will get on with the other the other nine Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, just I just want to pick out some of those lovely details. You see, you see there, you can't really see the detail too well. You can see there is detail there, but it's not too fantastic. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little bit of brightness to it. Now the easy way to do this is to just touch it up with a bit of orange, but I'm just going to take it a little stage further still. And I'm going to do a mix of red and a yellow because red and yellow makes orange. Um, and this is a flat yellow. This is just a, a mid, mid yellow. Now both of these colours are quite strong. So you've got to be careful. What I'm going to do, I've got a scrap piece of plastic here. You can use a palette. I've got two blobs of red there on the left. And one, one blob in the middle. And then let me just double check I've shaken that right and I'm gonna put two blobs of yellow there about the same size and one blob in the middle and then what we will do is I've got an old hole I don't like these brushes these are the old start oh, these are the new start brushes from Citadel so this is our mid color as you can see it's a little bit brighter it's not really bright enough actually funnily enough not well not bright enough for what I want and I really want this that's better so there we made a nice because red is a very strong color um, so what we can then start to do is we can pull in some of this one and pull in the red and then we've got something in between and then we can pull in more of this and add in a touch more yellow and we've got brighter and then we can pull in more of this with a touch more yellow and then we can pull in some of this and some of this one so you see now we've got a nice range of colors so what I'm going to do now is get a, a dry brush this is um, you can either use an old brush or 
in the case of this one this is a uh, I think this is a hog hair brush and what we're going to do is we're going to get our color and then we're going to wipe the brush clean on on a piece of uh, piece of paper tissue paper and then what we're going to do is we're just going to flick it over the details like so but actually looks like this might be the better color so always start a little bit too dark and uh, I'll explain why I'm I keep painting my my thumb in a moment all right so what I've actually got I've not actually mixed these paints um, fully so what's gonna happen is As I paint each one, they're going to be very, very slightly different. Let me just move my light down a bit. Where I've moved my camera in, the light isn't quite so good. So we'll touch a yellow. You notice I've not thinned my paints. We want that paint nice and thick because we, we want the pigmentation. Remember when I explained about the pigmentation? And what I'm doing is I'm hitting as many recesses as I can just from the top I'm not bothering with the bottom because we're after bits where the light would catch and I want to keep this fairly subtle and some of this detail will be hidden up by the cannon but we know it's there so let me compare the two and you can see that this one's just got slight more subtle detail it's not it's not massive my camera really is not focusing today. Um, let me see if I can. No. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you can see it's just a little bit, a little bit more. You can take that detail up as much as you want. Um, I mean, you could go in with full yellow if you want. I personally wouldn't, but um, there's nothing wrong with just hitting the very, very top with a yellow. So you've got a certain amount of detail there, but on the top you've just hit that a bit higher, just perhaps where the sun would hit it. So I'm going to carry on doing these, and then I'll show you the final result. So what we're going to do now is we're going to attach the cannons to the actual bodies. Now for this we need to hold it this way and that's with a little small bit at the back and then the cannon, I don't know if you can notice that, but there's the little the little um, locating pegs, I'm going to call them locating pegs, but they're actually set slightly off centre, so you see that's above the middle and if I turn it round you might be able to see it's below the middle. You need to get those pegs so that they're on the lower side and they will go on like so. And that will be your cannon. Now there will be three glue points. The glue points will be there and there. And I'm just for a bit of safety, I'm just gonna pop a dab there. So I'll do one and then we'll do the re uh, I'll do the rest speeded up. And then you could just see where the glue point is there. Just keep an eye on where it is and then make a mental note. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use some plastic. Um, that just keeps normally, well, quite often where I can get away with it, I'll apply the, the glue straight from the bottle. Um, but there'll be a lot more control using it this way. Um, you can use a cocktail stick, but I've just fashioned a little pointy stick out of some of the waste sprue material. So pop a little bit of glue. Let's find a nice um, staging area. Pop them there when I've done. So pop enough glue on there. Um, so dry fit works perfectly. Take the cannon off, leave it in a position that you know is fine. 
and we'll pop glue, 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 glue. Take the cannon, place it onto there, hold it for five to ten seconds. And the way to test it is to hold the cannon there. That's perfect. And as you can probably see, that's going to hold up. So I'm going to get on with the rest, and then we'll uh, we'll just finish them off. Okay, so we are getting to close to the end now. Now, there is one stage I actually completely forgot about, but I think it could work out easier this way. Um, the part that I've missed out, just over the top of these, uh, we're gonna call them locating pegs for the sake of uh, as some name. Um, so there's two little clips and they're gonna be really fiddly. Um, and these are the parts if you can see that and they are going to go over like that focus like so um, and however they should have been painted black before we stuck them on but to be fair to you we have to do a, a little bit of a uh, a quality control check. I don't know if you can notice there's a couple of tiny bits where the black just needs reapplying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these on and then uh, I'm going to paint over them afterwards. And I'm just going to put the paint straight on um, because I am going to varnish at the end just to try and seal all that paint. As long as we're not actually making lots of contact with it. Um, and you see there actually I painted some red on earlier. And where I've touched the end, it's just rubbed that paint off. But once that's dry and sitting, obviously if you don't touch it, it's not going to rub the paint off. So let me just quickly clean my brush. Lovely. And then what we'll do is we'll glue these bits on. And I'm, I'm making a little staging area here. Um, what I've done is I've got, so I can keep track of them, I've got five little trays there. And each tray has got four, four of them on. So what I'm going to do, the first one, we need to do a dry fit just to see where the glue points are. Once we've actually glued the first one on, we'll know where the points are. Um, so we can just go straight in with the glue. And we want to put as little as we can on because we don't want that glue oozing out all over the place. So, and this is going to be slightly fiddly and I do apologise there's one on and I don't know if this one on the other side is going to be more or less fiddly because I'm right handed but we'll find out sorry I didn't mean to knock the camera there so two tiny dabs of glue one pin and That's actually not bad. That's that's not not awkward to do. So let's just see if we can move that. That's stuck on. So we'll leave that there, and then we'll do the second one. And then once I finish this, I will uh, I will do the rest in in fast motion. So that's on. And in actual fact, with this glue, you can put the uh, the brass part on just on the edge and then just push it in with your fingers or, or your, your tweezers or something um, so it's not it's not instant stick obviously once that's glued that's probably staying on there but obviously if you can get in straight away 
There we go. Oh, that one's a little bit off. We got away with that. No, we didn't get away with that. Might need to pull that off and start again. This is why I like to do my QC at the end. Because I've probably, yeah, we're going to have to start again with that one. Sometimes if that brass bit isn't quite making contact, it's, uh, it's not going to stick. There we go, that's much better. So that's two done. And let's give that a close look. Obviously that brass is sticking out like a sore thumb right now, but once we paint over that, that will look lovely. Okay, so I'm gonna do the rest of this in fast motion. Okay, so um, now I did have a bit of a boo-boo. Um, I did try to paint over the, the brass bits with straight with black, but it really doesn't want to stick too well. So I don't know if that doesn't want to come into focus. There you go. You see the, the black really hasn't stuck too well. So what I'm going to do, now this primer, I've never used it on metal, but it does say suitable for use on metals. So, um, and I can't find my black. So I'm going to just put a little bit of grey primer on instead. So we'll see how that goes. And we'll just pop a little tiny bit on. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So apply it quite thinly. And all we're trying to do is just get some coverage over the brass. And I don't think that's brilliant, to be honest with you. Um, in all fairness, primer, when it's brushed on, I never seem to get fantastic results with it. That seems to have done the job. I seem to have need to put plenty on, actually. So that's fine. And then what we'll do, try not to get any on the, uh, on the lead part but don't worry too much if you get some on the cannon because we're going to go over it in black anyway so i'm going to carry on with the rest of those so let's get this finished off um, so what I'm going to use then to finish off the black is the uh, the Abaddon black again Let's see if I can get that into focus we're not focusing focus oh it's not playing is it so let me see if I can just adjust the lighting a bit sometimes the lighting helps No, it's just not going to focus. Let's see if I can play with this. There we go. Obviously a problem with the focus. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use quite a small uh, paintbrush. This is a, a 3.0. And I'm going to get probably not enough for this whole project. So we'll have to top it up again a bit later on. And what I want to do is... I want to thin this, but not quite a one-to-one -one mix. Um, I want I want to do this in one in one coat where possible, but at the same time I don't want it so thick that I'm not going to get the control. So I think that's probably about right. So we'll look at the coverage. Yeah, it's a little bit thin. 
Uh, okay, let's just pop a little bit more paint in there. Give a good shake. So, maybe should have used a bigger brush for the mixing, but that'll be fine. We'll see how this goes. So what we're going to do is we are going to uh, paint the little brackets that we um, have just primed. We're going to paint those black and we'll do a quick inspection on the, on the cannon barrels and any parts that need touching up, we will. So all we're going to do is go over that like so. And because we've got a small brush, we should be able to do a good job of that. And we have actually got some of the primer over the red. So it means we're going to have to touch the red up, which I want to try and avoid because um, we've got that dry brushing and uh, if we have to paint over the red then obviously we could we could get a, a poor color match so it's not a problem so we'll just carefully go over that as you can see i've got some of the primer on on the gun on the actual barrel so that's going to have to be touched up which is a nut again why we painted over um, there's a bit there um, if you remember when we went over the, uh, the the original primer we did that so that if we had to do any touch-ups it wouldn't actually show so much so much because the finish was a bit different I've just dropped it right so there we go so that's that that cannon done we're just gonna have to touch up on the red which I'm not gonna do the red on camera because it's pretty much the same as this so that is pretty much almost finished cannon. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the other nine. Um, as usual, speed it up. Right, so we're going to finish these off with a, a very light uh, dry brush. Now, the instructions do say burn umber. Now, burn umber is basically a ready brown, um, and I don't have any burn umber, so I'm going to use Rhinox Hide. What that's going to do, do you know what my focus today? Let me just. There we go. So that's Rhinox Hide. Now, I'm using Citadel paints. Um, this is basically just a ready brown. Um, this is a wonderful colour. It's um, if you really, really thin it, almost to a water consistency, you can really see the reds and the browns kind of almost separate. It's not that they separate, but the red really does come through. Um, so to dry brush, you know, I have explained it before. Um, all we need to do is just a little bit of paint on our brush. And then using our kitchen roll, we uh, you almost use toilet paper. Do not use toilet paper for uh, dry brushing. The reason being is that um, toilet paper kind of disintegrates and you end up with lots and lots of little bits on it. So what we're going to do is far too much on there. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned, when I dry brush, I just run a little bit on the back of my hand. If it shows on the back of your hand, you've got too much paint on the brush. So there you go, that's just perfect. It's All we're doing is we're just picking up the highlights. And we're just going to run along, run this along just the barrel of the cannon. Barrel of the cannon? Yeah. We're not aiming for... Um, we're not aiming for the clips. Um, in fact, we probably should have done this before we stuck it on but to be honest with you it's going to be far easier here now i don't know if you can see that 
but that is really really subtle you can hardly see it if I should just bring one that we haven't done and sat it next to it does that work there we go that's perfect I'm really liking that um, yeah, I don't know if you can see it that's just ever so slightly brown here and and that's that's all there is to it just a quick run up and down and that's done it so um, I'm going to carry on with the other nine and then that will be uh, this issue finished. Yeah.